Hi there, my name is Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand and welcome to my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now, this video is one in a, uh, a large series covering the saga of a uh, engine rebuild on a Toyota RAV4. Now, it's a 1996 two-litre inline four-cylinder RAV4 engine and we've got to the stage where the, the engine's out of the vehicle, we've done all the head strip and measurements and we're halfway through doing the block measurements and on this particular video I'm going to cover how to check the oil clearance on a big end journal and we're doing number one cylinder big end journal and to do that I'm going to use some plastic gauge okay okay this one's called flexi gauge but it's the same kind of stuff <clears throat> and what you need to do before you go any further is to make sure that everything is absolutely squeaky clean and that includes behind the shell on the caps because you know any kind of dirt or grime behind there is going to force the shell closer to the journal and it's going to give you a false reading so you know clean the hell out of the whole thing get it squeaky clean and then that way you're going to get a nice um, accurate reading which is the only reason why you're doing it to be fair now the specifications for this for this particular engine it should be somewhere between 0 0.024 and 0 0.055 millimeters of clearance that's the original spec that's how it came out of the factory now obviously this engine's pretty worn it's done like 250,000 k's so the maximum permissible clearance is 0 0.08 millimeters so we're going to use a plastic gauge, and there's a couple of previous videos on doing, um, you know, camshaft journal clearance, oil clearance checks, and crankshaft main journal clearance checks. This is very similar, same technique, but it's for the big end journals. So what you need to do is cut off a small length of plastic gauge, which is about the same length, if not slightly smaller, than the width of the actual cap or well, actually the width of the actual bearing itself, in fact, the, the shell which is inside there looks about two or three mil either side less. Okay, once you've done that, then we can lay it on the journal. Here we go. Right, so the idea is to transfer the plastic gauge, which is this little tiny green strip, off the cardboard and to lay it um, <clears throat> perpendicular, about 90 degrees to the journal, so it's across the journal rather than around the journal. Now, <clears throat> This is a bit of a pain actually because it's sort of a bit dry I think so we'll have to, it's always good to do the full width of the journal but we'll have to do it in two pieces. So there's one bit. Very fiddly, okay. So we've got enough there to give us a good, idea, good indication of what's going on with the oil clearance. <clears throat> now. Next job is to fit the cap, and you've got to make sure you fit the cap the correct way around. And on these ones, the little lug there, look, that sticks out on the cap, should be towards the front of the engine. So we'll just get rid of these little protective sleeves. We don't damage the journal with those bolts. And first job is to bring up the conrod. There we go. So that's now in place. We'll hold that, and then we can fit the cap very, very carefully. There we go, caps on, just put the bolts on, and the torque setting for these, it's a two stage torque setting, and you've got to do them right up to torque, otherwise your reading will be wrong. Uh, we've got 24 Newton meters for both bolts, both nuts, and then a 90 degree turn, and then we should be, should be up to the right spec. Okay. Right, 24 newton meters, and you've got to do this without uh, rotating the crankshaft. You've got to make sure that the crank stays stationary. If the crank moves at all, um, then you're going to have to start the whole thing all over again. Okay, 24. And 24. Now for the 90. Okay. Okay, that's one. Two. Wow. 
that's tight. <clears throat> okay, so the next job, now that the torque to spec, is to undo them again. Again, without moving the crank. Right, one. Two. Okay. And of course, you've got to do this to all, all, all the journals. You can't just check one of them. Right. There was a bit of wear on these uh, shells, so... I'm expecting it to be a bit a bit out of spec. Cool, that's a really good result actually. Okay. So all the plastic gauge on this particular occurrence has stayed on the on the journal and there's none really in the shell. You can just to say see an imprint in there, but there's nothing in there. So we'll get rid of that and we'll measure that. <clears throat> So, with your plastic gauge, it comes in the, the cardboard sleeve, and on the sleeve are a couple of scales. This is the imperial scale, and this is the metric scale. And you'll see on this particular sample, the plastic gauge, it does vary in width along the journal itself, which tells us that the oil clearance changes as well. Now, remember, the wider the, the, uh, the plastic gauge has been squashed, the less clearance. So we need to look at the thinnest point along this line here. Now, there were two pieces, so ignore that little bit there, that glitch. We need to look for the thinnest point along the plastic gauge, and that's going to give us a reading of the largest oil clearance, and that's what we're interested in. Now, if you offer it up, you've just got to match up which band on this scale is about the same as uh, the width of the plastic gauge. So we've found the, the narrowest point, and we're going to measure that, and that, one's, that band is too small. I reckon that one's about right. That one, that looks too big to me. Just. It's really somewhere in between that one and that one. Okay, well that one is 0 0.05 and that one is 0 0.038. So we're somewhere between those two. So I would say if we went for 0. Four. It's about as accurate as we're going to get, isn't it? So yeah, okay, 0 0.044. Okay, so 0 0.044, an approximate. Um, yeah, you don't have to go with exactly what it says on the piece of paper, you know, on the, on the scale. If it looks like it's somewhere between the two, then use, use your logic, you know, and work out and come up with an educated guess. Or an educated, not a guess, an educated estimate, which is a little bit more accurate. Now, 0.044 millimetres does, in fact, land within specification. Spec was 0.024 to 0.055. So we are within original spec. Um, so that particular oil clearance is absolutely fine, and it's nowhere near the limit of 0.08 mil. Cool, well that's good to know. Need to know these bother changing the shells. That'll save some money. Well, depending on whether the other the other three are all good as well. Right, well that's how you check oil clearance using plastic gauge on a big end journal on a crankshaft. Okay, uh, well, if you've got any questions or comments, then please do leave them down the bottom and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, then please do. More the merrier. It gives me more of an incentive to do more of these videos for you. Uh, but if you do subscribe, why not click on the little gear icon next to the subscribe icon and turn on notifications. And then that way, you'll get an email sent through as and when any new videos get uploaded to the channel. Okay? Right, well, you've been watching the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. All right, cheers. Until next time.